Dear God, school is different now. I don't understand the world, but I know that when hard things happen, I should pray. So that's what I do. I pray that we can keep learning, whatever that looks like, and that we'll be together, even if it's in a whole new way. God, I pray as we step into the unknown future that you continue to show me things about myself and life, things I can't learn in books. Be with me, God, no matter how this year unfolds. Help us, God, to do our best every day. Even when every day isn't what we thought it would be. Keep us safe and keep us learning, one day at a time. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Hey Quest Teens, I hope your summer has been safe and fun, although different, as we draw closer to a new school year. We want to invite you to join Quest Teens as a squad in your corner this new school year to help you grow, to stand with you in prayer, to encourage you when you feel like giving up, and to remind you that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. And so we're excited to be announcing and hosting a new eight-week foundations group this fall starting September 6th, to give you the basics you need to stand on solid ground 
in this ever-changing world. So we can't wait to see you. So we're back with the conclusion of Squad Up and we hope you've been encouraged and challenged to see how important it is for you to have the kind of squad in your corner that sticks with you, helps you grow in your faith, especially now when life gets a little crazy. And let's be honest, life is getting a little crazy. So we all need those kinds of friendships more than ever during these uncertain times to remind you of who you are and who you belong to. So let's kick things off with some conversation. Has a friend ever tripped you up? I mean, like literally, kind of like this. <laughs> wow, who can relate to that? You know, as funny as that is, in our friendships, the people we choose to walk together with, we also tend to stand or fall together. Sometimes literally, like in the video we saw, but also most importantly, the squad you choose will make the difference between you standing or falling. So we asked one of our team leaders if they've ever been tripped up by a friend in unhealthy ways for the worst. And this is what she said. Okay, so when I was about 11 or 12, um, I asked my parents if I could walk home from school and they oddly enough agreed to it. Usually I either took the bus or uh, they came and picked me up. So they finally said yes, I started to walk home and they the one agreement was that I couldn't cross the street because we lived on like a highway like street and they said just cross at the crossing guard and you can walk home so oddly enough of course when i was walking home i ended up closer to my house than the crossing guard so i told my friends like let's walk down to the crossing guard so i can cross the street and go home and they were like no we're close to your house here like let's just cross here uh we can walk up a block so your parents won't see you so we walk up the block crossed the street and when I got home, my dad was watching me from outside the window. So he knew that I crossed the street where I wasn't supposed to. And he asked me, did you cross at the crossing guard or cross the street without the crossing guard? And I lied and said I crossed with the crossing guard. And so when my mom came home, they talked and I got in trouble for not only lying, but for crossing without the crossing guard. You know, growing up for me, it wasn't always easy to stand strong on my own. And I wasn't great early with having the kind of squad in my life to stand strong with. And I admit, I didn't always make the right choices as a teen because of it. So, you know, it's true. No matter your faith journey, the squad we stick with is the squad we will stand and fall with. So what about you? What's been your story? You know, this matters for you today because you need the kind of squad to help you stay strong and stay standing. Like when you're tempted to make poor or dangerous choices, or when someone experiences a tragedy or questions what they believe, because you know, we're all imperfect people. Our relationships with each other can feel a lot like, uh, like a losing battle with gravity, like in the video we saw. We pull each other down, or, or sometimes we let ourselves be pulled down. Instead of helping each other stay standing, wouldn't it be amazing if you could trust the people around you? to have your back, look out for your best interest, and intervene when you're in trouble. And they could trust you to do the same. So here's the good news. God has given us, somebody say me, the tools for how to stand and defend ourselves and each other, to be ready to do battle together and fight for each other instead of with each other. So today we're gonna to finish our journey through the book of Ephesians, reading one of the most strategic descriptions 
how a follower of Jesus, how a Christian does battle in today's world. Yes, you heard that right. We don't fight our battles the way the world does. We fight our battles using God's weapons. And we're told that they are mighty through God for pulling down the enemies we face in this life. So I wanna invite you to read through the entire book of Ephesians as a way of learning a new way to fight your battles, which is all about how God's family, God's special squad on the earth is supposed to work when it's at its best. So let's lean in and see what God has to say in Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 through 18. And it reads, to end my letter, I tell you, be strong in the Lord and in his great power. Wear the full armor of God. Wear God's armor so that you can fight against the devil's clever tricks. Verse 12, our fight is not against people on earth. Did you hear that? It's not against people. We are fighting against the rulers and authorities and the powers of this world's darkness. We are fighting against the spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly places. Verse 13, that is why you need to get God's full armor. Then on the day of evil, you will be able to stand strong. And when you have finished the whole fight, you will still be standing. Verse 14. So stand strong with the belt of truth tied around your waist. And on your chest, wear the protection of right living. Verse 15. On your feet, wear the good news of peace to help you stand strong. Verse 16. And also use the shield of faith with which you can stop all the burning arrows that come from the evil one. Verse 17, accept God's salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit. That sword is the teaching of God. Verse 18, and finally pray in the spirit at all times. Pray with all kinds of prayer and ask for everything you need. To do this, you must always be ready, never give up. Always pray for all of God's people. Now, Paul had this one final word for, the G for Jesus' followers in Ephesus. Here are a few things we should know about Ephesus. Today, it's located in modern-day Turkey. Ephesus was, at the time, second only to Rome as a cosmopolitan center of culture and commerce. It was one of, of the churches mentioned in the book of Revelation of having lost their first love. And you know, it's no accident that Ephesians is the book that gives us Paul's beautiful description of the armor of God. The church at Ephesus was birthed in the midst of spiritual battle. The Greco-Roman world uh, boasted having a variety of religions, but Ephesus took it to, to like a whole new level. Ephesus was the city that was proud of the religious diversity and tolerance. The central religious figure of the city at that time was Artemis. Now the ancients considered the temple uh, to Artemis one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Now, life in Ephesus was revolved around the worship of Artemis, and at least 50 other gods were worshipped in Ephesus. Now, this included, if you can imagine, Greek gods like Zeus and Athena, as well as Egyptian deities like Isis and Serapis. Ephesus was also a center for emperor worship. Interesting, considering that one of the major themes of the book of Ephesians is that Jesus is Lord. It was a church Paul started, and he loved and it was because it was birthed out of a powerful move of God. It was a diverse church that doesn't make sense, really. Only God could make a group like this made of Jews, idol worshipers, sorcerers, masters, slaves, and rulers of the cities and combine them and make them into one church. A new kind of squad on the earth that shouldn't work together. But we have a savior who has the power to bring people together from all walks of life. And you know what? We're invited to serve a God that loves bringing unity from diversity. And he did it masterfully in Ephesus. So in these verses, Paul is reminding them that if they're going to stay together, they needed to stand strong in their faith. They needed to suit up daily and wear a new kind of special armor that can't be put on in the natural, on the outside, but instead on the inside. So check out this video to see what I mean. Everybody's on a different path, but, but some people are just a little, you know, further along. I get up every morning and I put on the full armor of God, just like the Apostle Paul tells us to do in Ephesians 6. Of course, it's made a few things more difficult. I've had to reevaluate some things, like how I get in my car, how I drink my morning coffee, but, but I've come up with solutions for most of these things. It's not for everybody. My wife's not really into it. Second. 
Hey, can you hear me? Dad, I need, I need you to talk just a little bit louder. Sometimes I hear people make fun of me behind my back, but I just turn the other cheek, you know? I mean, who's gonna be laughing when the day of evil comes? Not the guy in the suit of armor, you know what I mean? I'm working on my moves. Gotta stay sharp, you know? I've got my breastplate of righteousness. I've got my helmet of salvation. It doesn't get any more secure than when you're wearing the helmet of salvation. Shoot! I've got my feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace, the belt of truth. I got the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And I've got my shield of faith. I don't know why more people haven't done this yet, but they will. They'll learn. So you see in Ephesians 6, this armor is a lot like what we just saw, which seems pretty crazy and outdated for us today. But if you're any, if you're like a fireman or, or a frontline worker today, you understand what it means to wear special equipment that protects you from harmful things so that you could focus on your mission, which is to save and to help others. So Paul tells us to prepare for danger and difficulty. First, he says, put on the whole armor of God which in the Greco-Roman world of the first century, when Paul was, was writing this letter, Rome had conquered much of the world. So there was Roman soldiers everywhere. Most people did not like them. For early Christians, Roman soldiers were disliked for even more reasons. Uh, the Roman government had played a role in, in killing Jesus. The Roman soldiers were, were actively imprisoning, threatening, harming, and even killing followers of Jesus. Now, with all that in mind, Paul did something awesome. He took a symbol associated with the enemy, this object of power and oppression, and flipped it, and used the imagery of the Roman armor to tell the church, guess what? This unlikely squad, you and me, that they too needed to have a similar armor, but this one has authority and power in Christ. So they too would be able to claim their rightful victory in this life. But it wasn't the kind of armor that they might have expected. You see, our armor, a person who is a follower of Jesus, has the ability to fight their battles with, ready? With God's truth, righteousness, faith, salvation, and with God's spirit to stand strong. Notice that the armor has nothing to protect our back, which is no accident. That's why we need each other. And second, and most importantly, we need to pray for each other. Because when we're under attack, no matter what the enemy throws at us, we can stand back to back, ready to throw down the enemies of darkness and John Cena every lie that comes against us. Because especially now more than ever, we can stand together. Now, so here's our big idea for this week. We can stand strong together because that's what God's family, God's new squad does. We're gonna focus on this practical step this week. As you head out and spend time with others, we challenge you to look and to think for ways to, instead of fighting with each other, to fight for each other. So here are three ways to stand together. Number one, put on your armor. Don't just toss it aside or ignore it. Suit up every day in God's protection. You're not the only one at risk. If you don't, we all are. We need each other and don't be afraid to help, to ask for help if you're struggling to get your armor on. Number two, help someone else with their armor. If you see someone else on the battlefield who seems to have forgotten a piece of their armor, help them out. And lastly, number three, and the most important one, like Paul asked the Ephesians to do, pray for each other. Prayer, a prayerless life is a powerless life and we're called to live a life fueled by God's power. You don't have to pray long, but don't go long without prayer. Now, I invite you for a time of reflection by watching this awesome testimony from our team leader. Okay, so with this past quarantine and everything, I was in school, transferred from being in classes to being online, had a lot of stuff going on at home, and I was a frontline worker. So it was just overwhelming. Um, and I found myself like crying a lot, which is kind of unusual for me. Um, so I just started telling my friend 
this stuff over text. And she said, hold on, I'm out right now, but when I come home, I wanna talk to you. And I'm just gonna let you vent and get everything out. So she called me and I did that. And her silence was enough. Her listening to me was enough. And after I just got everything out, she said, I wanna pray for you. And we sat there, we prayed together, and I just felt so much better. It was like a lot of like the stuff I was dealing with was just able to come out and I was able to start healing from there. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. Imagine if we did this and stood strong together and had the kind of godly friendships that we could stick with and stand with. Can you imagine how every battle that comes our way might turn out so differently? Coming back to my squad story, if it wasn't for the squad in my life that I have today to help me put on God's armor, especially when the parts of God's armor seem so hard and so heavy, I wouldn't be standing today where I am. And it also gives me a new desire to do the same for others who I see need help putting on God's armor so we can fight together and not at each other. How might that kind of squad impact this world? Our relationships, our friendships, our families, our schools, and our communities. Can you just imagine how different our world might be if we had a squad like this rising up? We need them today more than ever. I don't know the details of every battle currently being fought by the people watching. And I don't know what kinds of battles we will face this year. But let me tell you, no matter what challenges come our way, I believe we can face them together because that's what God's family does. If you're fighting a battle, you're not sure you can win, let's hear it. And send me a text at 201-286-1445 or DM us at Quest Teens on our Instagram page. I wanna pray for you. We can hold you up and guard your back. If you think you've already lost whatever battle you've been fighting, don't give up yet. Remember, Jesus has already won your battles for you. You're not fighting for victory, you're fighting from victory. So what's it gonna be? Will you fight for each other or fight with each other? Will you take Jesus up on his invitation to put on the full armor of God and join this new kind of squad on the earth, the kind that stands strong, together. It's only when we embrace a new way of doing battle is when we will have real victory. You know, Jesus didn't fight and win the battle against sin and death the way any of us would have thought, but it's the way God provided for us to overcome the powers of darkness in our world. So it's your move. So will you embrace the gift of grace given to us by Jesus' life, death, and resurrection? You know, I hope you will because the world needs a different squad that knows how to stand strong together. I hope you will and watch what God can do through us. Now, I invite you to bow your heads with me and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the tools to stand strong together. Lord God, help us to put on your armor every day, to choose, Lord God, to put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, to have the sword of the Spirit in our hands, to put on the, the sandals of peace, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that each and every day we may choose to put on the armor of God, that we may help others put on the armor of God for those that we see struggling in our circles of influence. And most important, that we may pray for each other. Lord God, I pray for our students in this coming school year, Lord, that they may feel uh, uh, encouraged, that they may feel your presence, Lord God, that they may know, Lord God, that they've won the battle when they are in Christ. Lord God, we pray, Father, for those students that have yet to accept you as their Lord and Savior. Lord God, we pray, Father, for those that are making steps towards you every day and growing in their faith. We ask you, Lord God, that they may consider what life might look like if they had the full armor of God put on every day. We thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen and amen. If you pray that prayer, welcome to God's family and your new journey. Now text the words to the numbers on the screen for resources to help you in your decision and for ways to connect with us further. That's all the time I have for you today, Quest Teens. And remember, stand strong together.